Um, uh, I'm going to give this the talk in English because I think it's preferable for you. And for me, probably, you understand better English than Spanish. And for me, I prefer to talk in English. I prefer talking in English when I speak science because I think this is the language of science. So if uh, you don't mind, I'm going to give my talk in English. And first of all, I would like to thank very, very much Orlando and all of you for your kind welcome to this uh, nice city and nice place. And I hope uh, not to bore you too much. Um, what I'm going to do is to give you some very recent examples of our work in this large area of electrochemical biosensors. And I'm going to merge some clinical applications with some use of uh, smart nanomaterials or smart hybrid nanomaterials to construct these uh, electrode interfaces. So, which is the general goal in our research group? The general goal is to prepare electrochemical biosensors with improved analytical performance and robustness. And this goal is directly linked to the development of novel strategies to prepare electrode surfaces with very particular and special properties. This is, this is probably the key of the presentation and the key of our work in the last years. So we need to prepare interfaces, electrical interfaces, that allow the efficient and stable immobilization of biomolecules without affecting their biological function, but also favoring the fast and efficient occurrence of the electrochemical processes associated with the analytical reaction at these electrosurfaces. And to do that, we have used a lot of, of molecular biorecognition interaction. I'm not going to repeat everything is here and as uh, it's going to be available at the web page. You can um, consult all what you want. And also, we have been used in the last year, uh, is this? Okay. a kind of different nanomaterial combining the pair of these two scientists. But with a special emphasis in the preparation of hybrids nanomaterials by combining some of these nanomaterials. So, as I told you, in the last year, we've been especially interested in the development of these electrochemical biosensors for the fast and ultrasensitive determination of several analytes of clinical significance. And to do that, we have prepared different electrochemical, we have developed different electrochemical biosensing strategies. Analytes include hormones and obesity markers, dopant substances, pathogenic bacteria, cardiac and cancer markers. And what I'm going to show you is, are, are, is um, some recent examples of this, these different strategies. But a common element in order to develop these electrochemical biosensors in most of them is the use of the so-called screen-printed electrode-based biosensors in order to prepare disposable, disposable devices useful to uh, be devoted to point-of-care applications. So it's an alternative for point-of-care applications. Nowadays, the, this microfabrication technology is very well established for the preparation, the mass production of thick film electrochemical transducers. And this is an easy way to prepare robust, mechanically robust, inexpensive, and reproducible solid film electrodes. So in most of the application I'm going to show you, you will see this kind of electrochemical transducers. And what I'm going to do is to prepare different electrode surfaces using this kind of nanomaterials or not. We will see. So which is the first example I want to show you? The first example I want to show you is the simultaneous determination of two hormones, the two human hormones, the human growth hormone and prolactin at a level-free electrochemical immunosensor. These uh, hormones are naturally occurring polypeptidin hormones, which are produced in the pituitary gland and play multiple functions in the organisms. So, AGH is essential for body growth and 
also plays important roles in uh, the metabolisms of proteins. And on the other hand, prolactin plays also important roles in many biological processes, such as the stimulation of lactation, regulatory roles in the growth and in differentiation of mammary glands and in reproduction. And they have a common activity because it has been pointed out that alterations in their secretion levels are frequently related with the systems of very important diseases such as, for example, pituitary adenomas. Much attention has been paid to the uh, ratio between the concentration of these two hormones because this ratio can be used in the diagnosis of mammary tumors. And also, the uh, levels, the secretion levels, are related with other important biological roles and diseases such as the lipid metabolisms, the adipose tissue development and function, and insulin production. Therefore, the development of analytical methods able to provide the simultaneous determination of these two hormones is important in order to have tools available for their easier and, and uh, efficient diagnosis of many relevant diseases. This is the schematic display of the fundamentals for these label-free electrochemical immunosensors. As we are going to do simultaneous detection of two hormones, we selected a dual screen printing carbon electrode. But this dual screen printing carbon electrode that is composed of two identical um, elliptical working electrodes, as you can see here, are both of them uh, modified with multi-wall carbon nanotubes. And this electrode platform is selected because of the well-known electrochemical behavior of these electrosurfaces in terms of the achievable higher electrochemical responses and also this excellent reproducibility of the amusements. So these uh, dual platforms are the support to further modification with PDOT. This is a polymer, a, a conducting polymer, PDOT and gold nanoparticles. And then we prepare the immunosensor. And the analytical readout corresponded to the electrochemical oxidation of dopamine in solution to dopamine quinone, uh, to dopamine quinone recorded voltammetrically by differential pulse voltammetry at this electromodified surface. So this is, these are cyclic voltammograms recorded with different electrodes at different stage in the modification process. As you can see here, the voltammetric responses obtained with electrodes with no p dot nanoparticles show a less reversible behavior than that obtained with uh, electrodes modified with p dot nanoparticles. This can be attributed to the fact that p dot nanoparticles can act as an electronic mediator because of its rich electronic cloud. And furthermore, this polymer film provides with a hydrophobic environment which makes the uh, electrochemical oxidation process for dopamine more reversible. The further modification with gold nanoparticles give rise to a slight shift of the anodic and cathodic voltammetric potentials towards lead positive values and also to a remarkable increase in the anodic peak current. This is most likely due because at pH 7.4, dopamine is uh, positively charged. And then it can be absorbed, electrostatically absorbed, on the negative charged gold nanoparticles prepared from citrate collodial coil uh, mixtures. Once the electrosurface is prepared, we proceed to the antibody, the corresponding antibody immobilization on the surface confined gold nanoparticles, taking advantage of the absorption capability of negatively charged gold nanoparticles for the captured antibody. And then we proceed to drop the target antigen solution onto the respective immunoelectrode 
and then the analytical readout corresponded to the voltammetric uh, response for dopamine. As you can see here, these analytical readouts corresponding to the changes occurring without target analyte and with the different concentrations of the target analyte in order to construct the corresponding calibration curve. This is, these are the calibration curve obtained, and this is the analytic, these are the analytical characteristics, where you can see that the linear range between in these values and a very low detection limit can be achieved. Actually, these analytical characteristics can be advantageously compared with that obtained for other electrochemical immunosensors, single electrochemical immunosensors reported in the literature. Regarding the selectivity of the immunosensor, the batteries, this, this is very difficult with <laughs> always with batteries, with this kind of, of well, this is the same. The selectivity, regarding the selectivity of the immunosensors, both different hormones, such as progesterone, cortisol, testosterone, and follicle stimulating hormone, as well as other electroactive substances, such as, such as ascorbic acid or uric acid, which can be easily uh, oxidized at a relatively low potential, cause no significant interferences for the determination of bone hormones at these concentration levels. This is probably due because of the excellent electroanalytical behavior of the oxidation process for dopamine on the nanostructure electrosurfaces, which gives rise to a separation in the voltammetric responses from the less hydrophilic dopamine with respect to the anionic ascorbic acid and uric acid. A very important point in the development of these simultaneous dual or multiplex immunosensors is the evaluation of the potential cross-tucking between the both, between the adjacent immunoelectrodes. And this was evaluated by comparing differential pulse voltammograms obtained for each immunoelectrode in the absence and in the presence of a given amount of the non-target antigen. As you can see here, no significant differences were observed in the voltammetric responses for dopamine, both in the absence or in the presence with, of the non-target analyte. And therefore, we could conclude that no significant cross-talking occurred with this uh, simultaneous determination of both hormones. And uh, finally, as uh, we try to do always, we applied this uh, dual immunosensor to the simultaneous determination of both hormones in human serum and saliva samples. Um, um, regarding serum, human serum, we spiked the, the serum sample at three different concentration levels that can be typically found in real samples. And we evaluated the statistical, the statistical comparison between the slope values, values obtained in the calibration graphs constructed uh, from the reconstituted serum by appropriate dilution with the calibration curves obtained with uh, um, hormones standard solutions. And we observed that no significant differences in the slope values occur, and therefore no significant matrix, a matrix effect was ap apparent with this, with this approach. And you can see here the results obtained by triplicate for the three different concentration level and the mean recovery was close to 100% in all cases. Exactly the same or similar results were found in saliva, spiked saliva sample, thus demonstrating that the simultaneous determination of these two hormones could be feasible at low concentration in human serum and saliva with practically no sample treatment. It's just a dilution in the, in, the, in the working buffer. The second example I want to show you is the use of the so-called nanobodies of biorecognition elements for the construction of magnetoimmunosensors. Mm -hmm.